Good morning, everyone. Are we all fully awake? We had some trouble on that count, didn't we? And I don't know what it is with falling, what is this, falling? No. Fall back? No, spring forward. Spring forward and fall back and all of that. And that reminds me that things change, our times change, our seasons change. But there's one thing that doesn't change, that is God and his love. I'm reminded of what it says in Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And so we have that reason to praise God through every situation, through all the times and changes of the season. So I'm glad that you're here. A warm welcome to all of you gathered here and a warm welcome to all those who will be watching our service on YouTube and Facebook. As we begin, let's take a little time to um, get to know, especially those of us who are here for the first time or after a really long time, if somebody would like to... Is, is someone here for the first time today? No? Oh, yeah. L Come on up here and you can just tell your name. Brave girl, you're really brave. Come. Tell us your name. Destiny Riddle. Destiny. We're so glad Destiny is here. Let's give her a big hand of those. Thank you very much. So did you go to Sunday school today? You yeah. did? Did you like it? Would you like your other friends to come too? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Destiny. Thank you very much. Anyone else here for the first time? Okay, we've all been, you've been here <laughs> twice. Sorry? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, does anyone want to share anything, any glory sightings, any God moments that you've experienced through this week, times when you've felt the hand of God comforting you, guiding you, felt his love that you want to share with people, this would be the time. Oh, one second, let me just, yeah, how long you can come up here? Two weeks ago, I gave the worship service message. And in that message, the thing that I was continually repeating was you have to listen. You have to know when God's presence is there. I've experienced it just this weekend. As you know, Karen, my wife, has been in, in and out of the hospital many times in the last few months. Friday, she went back by ambulance back to Lutheran Hospital. She was not in good shape. Yesterday, we weren't sure she was going to make it. This morning, she is alert, she is awake, she's eating breakfast, and she's mouthing off to the doctors. <laughs> the difference between the two days is miraculous. There has been many, many prayers by you folks, by myself. Yesterday there were tears given. Today there are tears of joy. God's work is at hand. We have to be aware. We have to listen. Thank you for sharing that, Harlan. Praise the Lord for Karen, and we'll continue to pray. A big hand to the Lord, because our God is a great God, a God of healing, and we can see his hand and his touch. Um, we'll continue to pray for Karen, praying that God would bless her on the road to recovery. We also have heard this morning about uh, Charlene. Charlene is... Um, 
not well. She's back in the hospital, Charlene Thomas, and I think they're going to, they're going to recommend that she go to um, rehab, rehab. I keep forgetting the words. So she'll be going to rehab. So please continue to pray for Charlene and her family as well. This is a difficult time. And so are all the rest of the people in our list here, in people who are unwell, people who are suffering various kinds of conditions. And even if we personally can't be there, and although we might want to support in a big way, prayer itself is a very big way to support our brothers and sisters. As we lift them up to the Lord, we believe that God will bless. As prayers go up, blessings come down. Praise the Lord, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. Call to worship. The Holy One calls us to trust and pray. God is our light and salvation, the stronghold of our lives. The Holy One calls us to take courage as we travel the paths of Jesus. Teach us your ways, O God. Lead us on our journeys. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold the beauty of the Holy One, the blessing of God's holy name. We have changed the order of service a little bit, and uh, so we have this very special time, a message that will be delivered in the form of a monologue. And, and Reverend Bob Kelly has personally written that, and he'll be performing it for us uh, today. And we hope that that will be a medium through which God talks to us, and we will find his grace in that. So we'll pray for him as well. And so that's why we have some changes in our worship service. Right now, let's look to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time we have for worship, for silence, for praise, this time to listen to you, this time for quiet adoration, supplication, fellowship, and feeding. You know where each of us has come from and what we need. We come seeking to be touched and transformed. Help us through our moments of strength and weaknesses, faith and doubt, submission and rebellion, seeking and neglecting. You know it all, God. As our loving creator who understands us, please meet us where we are and bring us up to where you want us to be. We want to thank you today for the special blessings our members have received. We thank you for McKenna Broadston, for Holly Kuhn, Karen Packard, Barry Regal, and Joanne Devon as I celebrate birthdays. Thank you for your blessings of provision and protection. Please let your grace and favor continue to enrich them in every way that they may rejoice in your goodness. We also want to thank you for these dear couples celebrating their anniversaries, Carly and Aaron Anderson, Tony and Eric Swee, Thank you for the blessings they've received together. Please continue to bless their love to grow and be a blessing for their families. Grant that their dreams and desires may find fulfillment according to your wonderful promises. At this time, we also bring before your, grace, your throne of grace and mercy those of us who are not well. Lynn Ball, Cindy Brown, Jaylene and Marvin Barton, Alan Johnson, Melissa Carpenter, Randy Shipman, Don and Elaine Burke, Greg Downs, Dale Johnson, Charlene Thomas, Carol Shanky, Karen Christensen, Scott Handley, Jessica Handel, Bishop Laurie Haller, and Pat Snook. As they deal with various infirmities of mind and body, please touch them with your healing hand, strengthen them, and bless them with your peace and your joy. We also lift up those who were affected by the tragic violence at East High School last week. We ask for your comfort and peace to be with the families of the child who died and the other children who are in critical condition. 
Such things bring us to realizing our limits as parents, as teachers, neighbors, and friends. And we realize that our communities need your touch so that we may have greater understanding, so that we may become more responsible and learn to walk on the path of harmony and brotherhood. We pray for the leaders and the people who are engaged across many levels striving for de-escalation and peace in Russia and Ukraine. Please give the leaders wisdom and compassion to stop all that causes loss, destruction, hatred, and strife. We pray for people who've lost loved ones, that you would give them special strength. Please bless them with hope for a better tomorrow. We thank you for our church and all the ministries that we have. We thank you for the wonderful talent and enthusiasm our members have to be engaged in selfless ministries in so many ways. Bless all these efforts and we ask that you would bless each one to see the rewards of their sincere service. We pray for Pastor Bob as he ministers to your word today. Speak to us through his presentation and open our hearts to receive your word. Bless each of us, especially in the Lenten season, to be drawn closer to you, closer to understanding your love and your will. Lead us to respond in a way that brings glory to your name and blessings to your people. All of this we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. In your bulletin, you'll find only Reuben's name written there, and then, but Reuben has brought his friend Adam Ari along, and it's a very special thing because Adam Ari is uh, playing the drums for the first time ever. So she's accompanying Reuben playing the guitar, and so we want to welcome them, and we want to appreciate them as these young people are seeking to do what they can to bring glory to God. Thank you, Reuben and Adam Ari. Um, good morning. And I apologize because it says here I am to worship, but the name of the song is uh, As the Year, so sorry about that. Scripture reading today is Matthew 16, 13 through 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, 
he asked his disciples, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on that rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. I can remember it as though it happened just yesterday. Though many years have passed, <clears throat> it is still very fresh in my memory and affects my life today. It all began that day by the Sea of Galilee. My brothers and I are fishermen by trade, and uh, we had just endured a whole night of fruitless fishing. That means we didn't catch anything. And uh, we were a bit tired and frustrated, but uh, we were standing there on the shore, shore when he appeared. We didn't really know him. We'd never really met him before. But instantly, I knew there was something special about him because I was drawn to him like a magnet, like a magnet. <clears throat> he came up to me and uh, I asked if he could borrow my boat. And if I would mind uh, taking the boat out a little ways from the shore. So we got in and we went out and I let the anchor down and uh, he turned around and started speaking to the large crowd that had gathered. It was fascinating. I mean, his words were like God himself was speaking to us. Oh, and I was not the only one. It seemed everybody there just was hanging on to his every word that he spoke. When it was done, he turned to me and he said, Simon, take your boat out into the deep part of the water where it's deeper and let your nets down. You will catch fish there. Where at first I was insulted because I'm a commercial fisherman. I knew these waters. I'd, I'd fished them many times. But because of the way he looked at me and how he talked, I found myself saying, why not? Let's try it. So we went out. We let the nets down. You won't believe what happened. Why, our nets just started filling up soon. <laughs> and they got so heavy we had to call for the men in the other boat to come and, and help us out. And we filled our boat and their boat full of fish. And when we was going in, the, the boats were almost sinking. 
I can honestly tell you, I've been a fisherman for a long time, and I've never seen such a big haul of fish as that day. That was the biggest haul of fish I ever had in all my years. It was something. I, I couldn't believe it. This man, there was something about him that was different. I mean, he was like God. Well, I began to feel unworthy. And I bowed down before him. And I said, Lord, you must leave. I'm a sinner. And I'm not worthy of being in your presence. You must leave. Well, he didn't leave. In fact, he didn't say anything, but he extended his hand to me and helped me to my feet. And then he issued a call. He said, follow me, and I will make you to become a fisher of people. Well, I didn't understand what he meant by that. But now these many years later, I do understand. <laughs> right then and there. Well, yes, right then and there, my brother Andrew and I made a decision that changed our lives forever. We didn't know where we'd be going. We didn't know what we'd be doing. But in our hearts, we knew the thing to do was to follow him. So we left our boats, our nets, our family, our friends, our home. And for three years, we followed the master. It was amazing. The things we experienced, the places where we went. We saw him work miracles. The blind were made to see. The deaf were made to hear. The lame were made to walk. The lepers were cleansed. The, we saw demons come out of people. While we even saw one day he took a little boy's lunch and he made it, fill, he made it feed over 5,000 people. And then another time he went to a wedding and turned the water into wine. And the things that I learned from him, he taught me how to follow as his disciple. He taught me how to be humble, how to love each other, how to serve each other. And he had his enemies, the religious establishment, the scribes and the Pharisees and people like that and they were always coming to him asking him questions trying to trap him so they could have something to get rid of him on but he always outwitted them always and and we disciples we we a lot of times argue with him about what he said and we ask a lot of questions I remember one time we were out on the, the lake and a storm came up. A big storm. I mean, it was huge. The waves were very high and the winds were boisterous. And Jesus was asleep. Can you imagine that? This storm, we, we thought we were going to die. And he was sleeping. Well, I went and I woke him up. And I said, Master, don't you care? Don't you care that we may die here? Jesus, he didn't say anything. He just turned around and faced the storm and put his arms out and said, Peace be still. And immediately, the, the water became smooth as glass. The wind died down. And it was calm. I mean, who can do this? It, even the winds and the waves obey him. I didn't hardly know what to think, but I knew that he was something more than just a man. 
I remember another time we were out in the boat and Jesus was not with us that time because he was up in the hills saying his prayers to his father. And we uh, got in the boat. He told us to go to the other side. So we were in the middle of rowing the boat across the lake. And again, another big storm came up. We had rain, we had thunder and lightning and wind and it was again awful. <laughs> and we looked out and we saw across the lake a figure and we thought it was a ghost. I mean, we really did and we were terrified. Well then he spoke up and he said, don't be afraid, it is I. Well, I wasn't sure, so I said, well, Jesus, if that's you, tell me to come to you. And he said, all right, come on. <laughs> and I just climbed over the side of that boat and I started walking on the water. And then all of a sudden I realized where I was. I, I felt the wind against my face and I saw the choppy water beneath my feet and and the, the, the thunder was, and lightning were going on. And I began to sink. I mean, I went down. And in desperation, I cried, Lord, save me. And right there, Jesus reached down his hand, picked me up, and we walked together back to the boat. I knew he could do anything, and I knew that I could do anything for him. I loved him. I, I adored him. And I became his fiercest defender. Another time, we had a strange experience. <clears throat> Jesus took me and James and John up on a mountain and he told us to sit in a certain place and then he went ahead and then he started to pray. And then all of a sudden his clothing changed to brilliant white. And then the next thing I knew, there was two other figures who wore white with him. And they were talking to each other. One was Elias, and one was Moses. And they talked together. And then uh, a cloud came down, and then the figures, they left. And he was alone, and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, hear him. And then he came back to us and he said, now don't tell anybody what you've seen or witnessed here today. We didn't, we, we were quiet about it. It was so strange. Then another day, we were uh, walking together down the road and uh, Jesus turned, all of a sudden just turned to us and he said, who do people say that I am? Well, the answers, some say you're Elijah, some John the Baptist, some a prophet. And then he turned right to me and looked me right in the eye and he said, who do you say that I am? And I was ready. I said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, he was pleased. And he said, blessed are you, Simon Berjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but you're our father only. But then he began to talk about something that deeply disturbed me. In fact, it made chills run up and down my spine because he talked about the fact that he was going to be crucified that he was going to rise from the dead. Well, that crucifixion, I, I, didn't, I didn't receive that. <laughs> and I told him, I said, Master, it won't happen. I will see to it personally that it will not happen. Well, he didn't like that and he said, get behind me, Satan. Kind of made me feel bad. but but I felt the same about it. I would defend him to the very end. 
Well, the time for Passover was coming. And he told some of the disciples, he said, now go and you'll find a donkey with a colt by it and unloose them and bring them to me. And if they question you, say the master needs him. So uh, it was Sunday morning and the town was just crowded. There were thousands of people there and they'd lined the, the road, the, the street, anticipating a big parade. And then we thought, ah, oh, this is the day. This is the day. And Jesus, the gates opened and he came riding on that donkey. And the crowd were festive. They, they waved their palm branches. <coughs> they put their coats and all in the middle of the road for the donkey to walk on. And they said, hail him, hail him. Hosanna to the king. And again, we disciples thought this is the day. This is the day that we were looking forward to. Jesus has been crowned as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And now he's going to set up his kingdom here on this earth. And we're going to have a part in it. But as he came by, we looked and there were tears in his eyes. He was weeping on this, this day when he should be joyful and happy. He was weeping. Little did we know that very soon there would be certain events take place that would change all our lives. It would be so tragic and yet so glorious. And the crowd, instead of saying, hail him, would say, nail him. Well, later, he went into the temple, the, the temple courtyard. And it was a beehive of activity. There were people everywhere. There were animals that were for sale for the sacrifice. The money changers were there, and it was, it was quite a deal. And Jesus, he looked around, and he had a stern look in his face. And then he took a whip, and he said... My house shall be called a house of prayer. But you've made it a den of thieves. Get out of here. And he, and he just turned over the tables and the coins and the animals went everywhere and, and the people, they left. <laughs> the religious crowd didn't like it. But he, he took care of that temple that day. And then uh, it was Thursday of that week and Jesus again called some of the disciples and he said, now go find a room and you'll prepare it for the last supper that we'll have together. Well, Thursday came and we were all there. And then all of a sudden, Jesus took off his robe, took a towel and tied it around him, took a basin of water, knelt down and began to wash our feet. And when he came to me, I wouldn't have any part of it. You don't wash my feet, Jesus. To which he said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you'll have no part of me. Well, then, Master, wash me all over then. <laughs> when we sat down to eat, he made a shocking, a simply shocking announcement. He said, one of you will betray me. Well, then we all just, is it I, is it me? Am I the one, Lord? I knew it wasn't me. And I told him. And he said, Peter, before the rooster crows in the morning, you will have denied me three times. No, Lord. No, I will defend you to the end. I will die if I have to. And I was determined. The traitor turned out to be Judas. And when the announcement was made, Judas 
got up and just ran out of the room into the darkness. Then we all together went to an olive grove called the Garden of Gethsemane. And there Jesus turned to us and he said, My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Watch and pray with me. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh it's weak. So then he took me and James and John a little further in, he told us to kneel there and pray. And then he went on in and he fell against a rock and he began to pray. And he prayed so earnestly that sweat, drops of blood popped out on his forehead. We heard him. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. We tried to pray, and he came out to us, and, and uh, but we, we were so tired. We kept falling asleep. So finally the third time he came out and he said, well, take your rest. But oh, the, crowd, the mob is coming. And we looked in the distance and we saw a mob of people coming. They had swords and staves and, and all kinds of things like that. And the one leading the, the pack, you guess who it was? Judas. And then they came to us and Judas stepped forward he kissed him on the cheek and he said, Hail, Master. Oh, my blood boiled. I was so angry with him. How could he do such a thing following these years? And how can he, could he do it? Well, I wouldn't, I couldn't sit still. I pulled out my sword and I started swinging it. Just, I would cut all their heads off if I had to. And I caught the ear of a servant. And Jesus looked at me sternly and he said, put up your sword. It'll not be done this way. And then he reached down and picked up the ear and put it back on the man's head and healed him. And then they took him away. Well, I begin to uh, have thoughts I hadn't had before. Fear took over. And suddenly I was afraid. I mean, if they were taking him, if they were going to kill him, well, they even may kill me and the disciples. How, how can we? I mean, oh, I was afraid. I was afraid. And as they took him, I followed, but I kept my distance. <laughs> and we got into the where the where they took him, the Praetorium. I, there was a little courtyard right there, and uh, they had it was a cold night, and the fire was going, and so I went over and I just warmed my hands in the fire and thinking about things. Pretty soon, I heard a, a girl's voice, and she said. You're a follower of Jesus, aren't you? At first I pretended not to hear her. I ignored her. But then she said it again. I says, no, I don't know the man. And then pretty soon another one spoke up and said, he's lying. He is a follower of Jesus. And I said, no, I'm not. I don't know him. And then yet another one said, he's lying. His speech betrays him. And that time I was so upset, I was so angry, I swore. And I said, I do not know the man. Well, then I 
heard the rooster crow. And it dawned on me what I'd done. Oh, my heart was broken. I wept and wept and wept. And then I looked and I saw Jesus. He was going down the road to the cross. He had a, a cross beam on his back. His back was ripped to shreds where the, the, the whip had done its work. His had a crown of thorns on his head and the blood was coming down his face. And, and then for just a moment, he looked at me and I knew that he knew what I'd done. And yet I still feel like he loved me. I just had to get out of there. I, I, I didn't know where I was going to go or I didn't know what I was going to do, but I got to get out of here. So I did. The next few days are a blur. I was in a daze. I, I slept a lot. and I didn't, didn't hardly know anything during that time. And then all of a sudden, Sunday morning, I heard a at the door. And I heard voices, women's voices. And they said, Peter, Peter, wake up. You got to wake up, Peter. It's happened. He's, a, he's alive. He's risen. And he told us to come and get you. Well, I didn't know what to think. I hurriedly got dressed and I followed them to the tomb. And sure enough, the tomb was empty. And Jesus had risen. He was alive. I could hardly believe it. For 40 days, he stayed <clears throat> on the earth. He, he met with us disciples a couple times <clears throat> in the upper room. And uh, <clears throat> Thomas, he had a lot of doubts. and He said, Jesus, if you're who you say you are, then let me put my hand in your wounds and see your hands and and he did. And then after 40 days, he, we went out and he ascended to heaven. And the angels who were there said, this same Jesus who is taken up from you will so come in like manner as you've seen him go. And then he told us before he went, he said, now you go to Jerusalem and you go to the upper room and you wait there for the promise of the Father. So that's what we did. We prayed and, and talked and shared and, and it was a glorious time. And then all of a sudden, we heard the mighty wind. We saw the tongues of fire as they f put on our heads, fell on our heads. And uh, we were really changed. And after 10 days, we left that room and we went out and we started witnessing on the streets. And I remember distinctly, I said, you've crucified the Lord of glory. You've crucified him. And they were pricked in their hearts. They were convicted. And they, they said, well, what can we do? Repent and Believe the gospel. And on one day, 3,000 repented and the church was born. Well, I got to back up and tell this. He, after he was resurrected, we were out on the, on the shores of the lake and uh, we disciples, we went fishing. <laughs> and... Uh, when we came back, Jesus had breakfast prepared. Can you believe it? <laughs> and uh, he restored me. That's all I can say. I was restored. I was forgiven. And then we went to the upper room. And, and so after that, he told me, he said, feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. So, uh, that's what I did. 
And in the years since that, I've been doing that, preaching, teaching, ministering. And now today, they've uh, told me I'm to be put to death. And I'm not afraid, not afraid at all. But you know, I kind of have the same feeling now as I had that first day on the seashore. I don't feel worthy. So I'm asking them if they'll let me be crucified upside down. Not like Jesus. I'm not worthy. And as I go to my death, I pray that I will not fail him, that he may be glorified in my death. I love him. To God be the glory. Amen. We've got a few announcements to make today. If you smell something from the kitchen when you came in, um, here's a hint. Host class, the Hope class, is hosting another dinner immediately after the worship service. Uh, please join us for fellowship and another wonderful meal. Uh, the Netwits will be meeting this Wednesday, March 16th at 2 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. Next week, Wednesday, March 16th, Nobel Prayer Practice and the choir practice will be at 7 o'clock. So the choir members need to remember that. Uh, Thursday the 17th at 6.30, there will be Lenten study in Fellowship Hall. They should have some green treats for you too, I would think, on the 17th of March. It's just a hint for anybody who doesn't realize what the 17th is. This Friday, March 18th, is a special party at Union Park Youth Group from 7 to 9 here at the church. Game room will be open and pizza will be ordered. They, she does need some volunteers for that and she just happens to be here today. So anyone wanting to volunteer, see my daughter Anna Weinheimer and she'll give you some details. Saturday, March 19th at five o'clock, there will be a second fun and games night. Everyone is welcome to join in. There are all kinds of board and card games going on and light snacks will be served. Now, if I remember right, some of the folks who were here last one, I know Bob was, they had a pretty good time from what I remember hearing. Had a great time. Next Sunday, March 20th, is the last day to bring your items if you wish to donate to the church for the spring rummage sale. So you got one week to get them in. The finance committee will be meeting next Sunday Notices will be sent to the members on what time? Sunday, March 20th, the Upper Room Discussion Group will be meeting at 3 o'clock at Shirley McClellan's home. The Education Committee is looking for a member to support the church Sunday school teachers during class Sunday mornings. Excuse me. <laughs> Let's try that again. The Education Committee is looking for a member to support the church Sunday school teachers during their class Sunday mornings. If you're interested, please contact Gary Broadston, the acting chair of the Education Committee. Any other announcements we need to make known? All right. If you will stand and we'll do the last hymn, Be Thou My Vision, in the 450 in the hymnal.
Um, before we close, I just wanted to say how grateful we are to Pastor Bob for that beautiful, beautiful presentation about uh, from the perspective of Peter. And there's something about Peter that just hits home, his personality with all the, the, the human frailties and the heroics and all of that mixed together because that's where we find ourselves sometimes up, sometimes down, and through it all we know that we can experience the love of the Savior. And so as we are thinking about Peter's experiences today, we can uh, keep that alongside our own experiences and experience the comfort of God's presence with us at all times. And in that faith, as we leave from this place, we'll leave with the assurance of God's presence. Let's look to God in prayer. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to each one of us. And Lord, as we leave this place, we want to continue to worship you and honor you in the opportunities that you give to us. And we want to live in the strength of your leading and your love and help us to overcome everything that comes in our way knowing that you are holding us. We commit ourselves into your hands. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and forevermore, amen.